Hello, uh, my name is Stephen Putz. Uh, this will be my impromptu review of XSplit Broadcaster. Um, I use XSplit mainly for broadcasting videos on Hitbox. I uh, started out on Twitch, but I actually much prefer Hitbox. Um, I actually really like XSplit. It's a really nice system, probably the best one I've used so far. Um, this is a basic view right here of the initial layout. You can see down at the bottom the scene sources. You can add in different scenes. You can see like your microphone and volume control down at the bottom there. You can see there are up to 12 different scenes you can select between. I'm actually making this video with XSplit as well too. So You can see I blacked out my name there. So that's my great paint skills there. I didn't really take too much time there. Just kind of blacked it out with a brush. Okay, so let's move on to the next scene here. I'm skipping the file because that's just where you can choose to create a new presentation where you can create different things in each scene for the ones, save the presentations and so on. Uh, under Add Source, which if you got is your options or if you got Screen Capture, which is where you basically can just actually just select a any screen or window on your computer, highlight it. Well, once you've chosen Screen Capture, you click on that window and drag the box out. <coughs> until you've selected everything that you want. Then that will become a scene that shows up in the bottom down there in Scene Sources. It'll also show up in the black window there in the middle and you can drag it to whatever size you want. Uh, game Capture, of course, uh, it actually gives you an option to automatically select a game that you're playing, which is pretty cool. Um, it only works for ones that are DirectX 9 or higher though. Uh, so like some of the games that I play, which are RPG Maker games, it doesn't work for that unfortunately, but I always can just use screen capture. Uh, media file, that's something I'm using right now for this actually. I took in uh, a bunch of pictures and put them in each scene for this so I can do this review here. Uh, you can also do videos, bring in videos and take clips from those. Web pages. Uh, you can do webcams so you can bring in like picture video from your webcam or you can do the capture cards. You can bring in games from like a PS3, PS4, Xbox, anything like that. Uh, video devices, so like also video cameras, anything like that too. Audio devices, of course, that lets you select whatever audio devices are connected. You can do anything from a microphone to, if you have like a digital interface like I could do, you could hook up a guitar, keyboard, anything you want to it, play it through it. <coughs> uh, you got, you can input text on there, and then we'll move on to the other, and then I'll take another, to another scene. Then you have your basic stuff. You have like image slideshow, which like things like you set up like the slideshow images, obviously. Uh, you get a Skype video, Star Wars video playlist, all kinds of different options there you can set up. So I mean, this really is like an entire video editing software, not just something that you can use to just cast. You can also take videos, create videos that you can piece together with the different scenes, shift between them. It's pretty cool. are at the view. Resolution is pretty straightforward. You set the resolution of the actual window there. That way you can set up, you can choose if you want it to be basic 240p and 480p and 720p, 1080p, so on and so forth. That way you can choose what size and quality your videos are going to be when you actually record them. <coughs> Frame rate, again that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the normal options on there only go up to 30. <coughs> But you can choose a custom frame rate, like I have mine set up to 60. Uh, your scene transition is your next option. That actually lets you uh, per, like choose how it's going to transition between the scenes. Obviously, you can choose fades, uh, any number of different options, like scroll out. Basically, just things that when you click on a different scene down there in the bottom, it'll whenever you do that, it'll transition. It'll do that effect before it moves on to the next scene. Projector basically just takes whatever you see on inside of here, inside of the black window there, and you can choose to project it onto a screen that's connected to your computer. Like I have a second TV that I'm using as a monitor, and if I go down to projector and choose screen two, what's in there in the black box will show up on my screen. Just like I was using like a projector, like projecting it onto there. Now 
broadcasting, that's the big thing here. Um, that's what most people would be using this for and what I use it for. Uh, as you can see, I have my hitbox set up there in local recording. Uh, my hitbox is what I use mostly, if I, but if you can set up your account with inside of it. You set up your settings, your username, your password. You connect it to your hitbox account or your Twitch account or whatever you use. And then whenever you want to use that, you just click on it, you left click on it, and it goes ahead and starts a broadcast. It'll pop up a little window in the bottom right hand corner that you can click on. It's real user friendly. It'll pop open your actual screen for you. So you can go ahead and look at it yourself and see how it looks to other people. Local recording is a little more simple. It just it actually records a video just right under your computer. Though actually Hitbox does that too. It, if, unless you check, unless you uncheck it and set it to you do not want it to record as well. But inside of those, inside the settings on your side of it, you can actually change things like the quality of the video, the size of the video, on and that's under the hitbox of broadcasting and the local one. You can set the kbps, the the actual bit rate for the video recording and the audio recording, all those kind of neat little features. And we're wrapping up here and I get into the end. You have your tools, <coughs> you share your stream, which that's the basic stuff. It lets you integrate your XSplit with your Facebook, your Twitter, uh, all of that. It'll set out, it'll send out a message whenever you're streaming to let people know. Uh, my recordings, that's just it takes you to your folder where all your where all your recordings are stored, your hitbox, Twitch, whatever, your local recordings. And then general settings, well, that's obvious. That's the general settings for actual XSplit. Things like uh, the layout, what video sources you want to use, what audio sources you want to use. If you're using like a, if you want to just go out to like a certain speaker system on your computer, if you have more than one. Uh, if you want to use a different mic, if you want to use a specific mic, you select it there. Basically, things like that. But this has been my little impromptu review. I really, well, I'm enjoying using XSplit. Especially since I'm using the professional version now, premium version now. Uh, big thank you to Freedom for that. Um, that about wraps it up. Uh, as you can see, this was a very impromptu review. Uh, I think I'm going to continue doing some of these. Uh, basically, there's no script, nothing at all. I just start talking. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, let me know what you think. 